Hmm. Good morning. It's packing time, and welcome to my fishing room. It's an absolute shit show. I can barely see the floor, and I've got to get through all of this and find what I'm going to take to America. Let me start. So I need that. I need to find some lures to take. Um, I need rods. I need reels. I need to use this. This is the busted fishing um, electric line spooler. So I'm going to use that. <sighs> Alright, let's get into it. Alrighty, first things first, before we get too deep in that room. Um, it's got this new camera and it's just a bit... They said one of the things is that the autofocus isn't that good. And there we go, it's a perfect example of it not being that good. Got a couple of deliveries. It's got this. I'm going to open that one up. I, don't, I think it might be hooks, which is nice. And I've just come from Fishhead, where I had to get a new spool of P6 Tasline because certain someone named Arnie recently went to PNG and he, the day before he flew, he went, Oh, Brooksy, I don't have any line. Do you have any line? So he stole all the line off this and filled two of his back casters. So while well, I was at Fishhead Dunk, also gave me this, it's a FCL CSP175, and I think that's the fast sink. Give that a go. Uh, what else did I get? Got some splitties, and because I'm going tuna fishing, mate, in Cape Cod, I got some of this Varavas, uh, what's it called, Maguro shock leader. It's like mono with a harder outer casing, so it, makes it a little bit more like fluoro without being fluoro because I don't like really using fluoro because it's makes you knots a bit scary. I've got to work out what I'm going to take. I'm going to obviously take two P10 casting rods, one lighter casting, slightly lighter casting rod. I'm going to take a P3 casting rod, P2 casting rod, and maybe a bait caster as well. And I might take a jig rod or two. Basically, I'm taking everything. And the thing with my um, airfares is the weight isn't an issue. I've got two times 23 kilo baggage allowance, uh, but it has to be, my rod tube has to be under a meter 57, which is going to be really annoying. If it's not, 150 US each leg of the flight. All right, first things first, let's open this package and see what's in it. How the fuck do you open this? With a knife? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. It is hooks from the wonderful people at BKK. We've got, we've got fangs, which are, that's kind of like the lighter. I guess I'll use these for um, if there's largemouth bass and um, apparently in Cape Cod they get the striped bass as well. While I'm there, I'm going to be uh, fishing and hanging out with Josh from Black Tip H. He wanted some of these, 16 Monster Circle. I'm guessing he's going to use them for sharks and Goliath Groper. up. So they for you, Josh. <laughs> Whole heap of big OK Lone Diablos. These are what I'm going to be running a lot on my stick baits for the tuna. So I've got a few different sizes. I've got sevens, elevens, and ninos. Perfect. Oh, sorry, Eamon. And then we've just got um, rat disease. So, obviously, if you watched the video I did the other day on the big OK hooks, you'd know about these. These are what I'm also going to run for tuna on my some of my stick baits. What are sizes I got? Four O's, three O's, slightly smaller monster circles, and these are for. These are for Matt, who runs the charter we're fishing with in Cape Cod. Tighten up charters. Uh, Matt asked me to bring some of those over for live baiting those really, really big tuna. So we might even do a bit of that while we're there, hopefully. So see so how we go. We've got some 12 O's and some 10 O's. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, man. That's one other thing that's happened today. This is pretty cool. Just arrived and 
By the time you're watching this, these will be up on the website ready for your purchasing pleasure. We have... Hey! New Yemen shirts. These are fishing shirt kind of style material. They're from a mate of mine, um, Benny Godfrey, from, who runs Aquasol Apparel. They are legit, mate. Really legit. We've got two different colors. We've got that dark gray. I'll show you the difference between the two. We've got the light gray and the dark gray. So that's the difference in color. Uh, both, both a long sleeve, both of the same material. And this material, the only reason I made, I actually hate the fishing shirt material stuff. It, for some reason, makes me stink and sweat. And this is the first ever fishing shirt that I've worn that that hasn't happened. That's why I ran with these before I've even made like a normal t-shirt. First run of them, they're gonna be super comfy and super nice to, to fish in all day in hot, hot weather. So um, yeah, they'll be live on the website now, mate. What you can do if you want one, go down to the description, hit the link, johnnybrooksfishing.com and you can get yourself one or as many as you like. Um, I think there's also a couple of hats left at this stage. There's no lures at the moment, but the next batch of Yemen lures isn't far away. So get on them, mate. That'd be great. Appreciate all the support, everyone that's purchased off the website so far. It, um, now that I'm back on YouTube, it's actually all very, very helpful because without a consistent income, all that stuff really, really makes a difference. And if you get on the computer, you're going to be in trouble. I'm telling you now. Get off, get off, get off, go on, down, that's right, hey, that's right, come on, yeah, I'm going mad, alright, next stage, we well and truly have shit absolutely everywhere, I'm trying to organise hooks, and having not fished for these fish before, I'm just kind of winging it, I'm taking a bunch of singles, mate, and only just a couple of like bigger trebles in case, I throw a poppers. I'd like to get one on a popper, but um, the guys said because the bird, there's so many birds, you have to throw sinking lures because the birds will hit them, and you don't want that. So I'll take a couple of bigger hooks for bigger like um, surface lures, just in case we find a school of tuna where there's no birds. So have a look. This is all the existing stuff I had in my um, just in a box already. Got a few. Jigs, assists, all these are already in there. And that's just some of the lures I'm trying to go through. So I'm gonna try and fit it all in this bad boy. This bag's actually been really good. It's a knack one and it's just waterproof and I put all my tackle in there. Sunscreen, very important. These days with sunscreen, you actually gotta be onto it with sunscreen because a lot of them have such bad shit in them, it actually like affects the reefs and it's full of like poisonous bad shit. So if you're thinking about it, this stuff's really good. Surf mud, it also comes in the tin for zinc. Um, I use this stuff constantly and it keeps me relatively unweathered, as you can see. No? It's pretty simple. Like if you're gonna, you obviously have to protect your skin. So pick one that um, looks after the environment as well. Um, you can never be too safe with skin protection. I think I've got to go get my skin checked again because I found a little like Weird little mole on my leg yesterday. So last time I went it was all clear. So remember to get checked pretty regularly eh? All right, obviously I'm going on this trip to catch tuna and the main guy that got this trip happening is Jason Ward from Siren Lures Some of you might know Siren Lures from some of my older videos in Australia They're very very hard to get at the moment. Basically Jason's a one-man Operation and he sells his lures to one tackle store in the world and that's salty water tackle in the US and when he Puts his lures up there. They sell out pretty much instantly. So they're extremely hard to get I've been lucky enough to get lures from Jason direct um, for the last couple of years and they're amazing. I've caught GTs on them, I've caught yellowfin tuna, I've caught long tails, I've caught all kinds of stuff. So they're a really good lure, a very strong lure and it's kind of a nice mental thing when you can throw a lure that most of the fish have never seen before just purely because no one can get them. Yeah, I think Jason, he's obviously designed all his lures for this tuna fishery where I'm going. So he's put the trip together so I actually don't have to go carry my prized possessions. This is one. This is his new 
I believe it's the Siren MXP, it's a mid-water explorer. It's a slower sink to the ones I've had previously from Jace, but like, look at it. Look at the finish on it, it's so ridiculous. And they're so strong as well, so really cool. Um, other ones I've got, uh, that's an that's a extreme fast sink, I think it's 135 grams. Um, really amazing indestructible lure so yeah jace has said don't bring any because he's got it all covered as far as siren goes and my goal for the trip there's another little one actually that's a slightly small one look at that ridiculous um my goal obviously for the trip as jason invited me on this trip is to can I have some focus please camera there we go is to Catch a tuna on one of his lures. So I'd love to catch my first ever proper bluefin on one of his lures. After that, I might mix it up a bit and throw a bit of other stuff depending on what the fish are eating. I've got a whole range of stuff. Um, Julian from Blackledge sent me a bunch of peanuts. A um, couple of them are really super fast sinking, whereas normally his peanuts are just like a, I guess you could almost say slow sink. So that'll be interesting. Got a few different colors in them. That thing looks pretty bloody good. I got some jack fins lying around that I've had for ages. Uh, I'm sure that'll get hammered. These things get hammered by tuna all the time. So I mind catching one on that. And then this is one of my favorite floating stick baits. If the birds aren't bad, throw that OTL. Thank you, Michael. It's a flare tuna popper. Yemen model, big tuna. Apparently the tuna can be feeding on big like garfish type bait, slimy mackerel type bait, and then they can also be feeding on tiny, tiny bait. So um, just in case of that, look at this bloody thing. It's the weirdest lure ever, but it's like, I guess it's designed to be a tiny little fish, but it's just a bit bigger so you can still throw it, but who knows. Wouldn't be a fishing trip without taking a couple of these now, would it? Nashi times Yemen. I've been a fighting Yemen 180 sinking. I just got off the phone and Nash is going to send me a couple of the Luma ones as well because I have none left. It'd be pretty cool to catch a big tuna on one of these bad boys. Next thing I've got to put me rods in the tube. The tube's definitely going to be longer than a meter 57. It's like two meters long, but whatever. Rod wise, I'm taking two Tabizo 8200s, just one spare. I've got a brand new Tabizo 83150 here. I'm taking the heavy jig prototype. Fakito Twitch, I'm taking. And the Fakito F761 long cast. B67 frog for in case I go bass fishing. Seven rods. Possibly eight. So let's try and get them in this bloody thing. Alrighty, um, as I mentioned, we can't use the electric line spooler because Dumbass here doesn't have a drill and Dumbass number two over here wherever he is didn't bring his drill either because Dumbass number one forgot to tell him to bring it. So we got Dumbass number three. We have Dumbass the number three. <laughs> so we're gonna spool up Soltega 5500 with 60 pound Taz line out of the moldy hammock yep. with the team Dumbass in his new Yemen shirt. Yeah. And we're gonna use the bus of fishing bees knees, mate. Alright, can you do a tension? Check, please. Check. Is that too loose? Too loose. Okay. So, if it's too loose, you got this. Tighten her up, mate. A few turns on that inside one. Wait, wait, wait. How's that? Yeah. And then you use that one to lock her off. So, right? Yeah. All right, let's go. You Look at his, is it tight? Yeah. Doesn't look that tight, man. It needs to be tight. I'm going fishing for big toonies. Is it like you've been sitting on the toilet for too long and your um, circulation's getting cut off? You know when that happens? That would happen to you quite a bit, wouldn't it? All the time. 45 minute poo poo. Oh. You're done. What, you've yeah. gassed out? This way, mate. Oh, he's gassed out. Hey? I thought you are having a wank. Hey? Yeah. You're gonna snap the trees, mate. Hey? I just said to Clint, maybe go a little bit more. And last time I spooled this up, I actually got wind knot. 
so maybe not anymore. I think no, that's, that's fine. Good. Had a few issues with it last time. I exploded a gear set. Hopefully, she's good now. Apart from that, it was really good. What you reckon? Yeah. It's like being at home. <laughs> 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 What are you ticklish? Watch out for the plants, <laughs> dude. Alrighty, that's it. Packing done. We're ready to go. Rods are ready. Tackles all in there. Just gotta get a few more shirts, and that's it. Um, I know it's a pretty boring video. Just getting ready, but a few guys asked for it. So there it is. Next time you see me, I will be at the airport somewhere on the way to America. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm a little bit nervous, a little bit scared. So I hate flying, but. Hopefully we get there all good. Right as of right now, there is actually a hurricane in Florida. Should be fun. Thanks for watching. See you in America, mate.